Okay, hi guys in Visualization Sonification. Um, this is just a quick video to go through the patch um, that I ran out of time to show you in the first tutorial. Um, those in the second tutorial, I mentioned that I would actually put up a, a video um, so that we could have a look at some ways to um, stream um, data in Max as well as take a smooth stream of data and actually sample that and use it for um, for something um, outside of Max as well. So I wanted to start by basically just going through um, a couple of objects you might not have used before that are actually really useful for when we're using data, um, uh, when we're importing data into Max and also um, when we're trying to make something interesting out of it. Um, and I also wanted to show how we can interface this with another program. So let's get started. I'm not going to spend too much time. Basically, the um, object which is the most useful, I find, is the coal object. If you've never used it before, have a look at the help file. It's really, really useful. I'm just going to um, start a new coal object, and then I'm going to call this test coal. You can call it whatever you want. Um, basically, what a call is, is a little data collection. If you double click on it, it comes up with a window, and this window is basically just a text file. All right, and you can store any data that you want in there and then retrieve it um, out. So, call is a little bit finicky. It likes um, uh, to have its data stored in a particular way, and that format is with an index. So, it can be a number or a name, um, but we're going to use a number and then your data. And at the end of the data um, index, you have a little semicolon. Okay, so the data can be a symbol, like my word data there, or it can be a number, sorry, a floating point number, or it can be an integer, it can be anything, really. Okay, so I've stored my data in there. I'm gonna close this window, and I press save. Okay, so that data is inside the coal. To prove that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little um, integer box, number box rather. I'm going to connect it. I'm going to create another one, number, connect the output, and we're going to see what we can get. So I'm going to remind myself of what's in there. Hmm, there's three different types of data there. So what I might actually do is I might use a message box to display my data because we know that a number box can't display a word and it can't also it also can't display a floating point number it's only going to display an integer okay so i'm going to connect this over here and get rid of this so we can just see prove that this data can come out the other end okay so let's have a look so i'm going to choose integer number one and we'll see what comes out so, symbol data. We'll talk about the word symbol in a minute. Let's have a look at the next one. Yep, 0 0.5 and number three, 167. Okay, as expected. Now, um, this data type in Max is called a symbol. So anything that is a, a word, um, uh, anything that you write as a sentence in um, between apostrophes, between um, uh, quotation marks, is called a symbol. In other programming languages, they call it a string. Um, so in order to display that properly, what we're going to need to do is use this command, root, so we can filter out the different types of data um, that we're expecting on the outlet. So we know we've got three types of data in here. We know we've got a symbol an integer, and a floating point. So that way, when I connect the output of my coal, I can view all of these different data types individually. So let's just have a look at that in action. So, number one, data and we see that this has stripped I'm going to get rid of this integer box it's stripped the word symbol off it because it's found a symbol and it's just displaying the word data ok 
Okay, I'm just going to get rid of these so that we can start afresh. Number two should come out to the end column because it's a float. Let's prove that. Aha, it has. And number three is an integer, so it's going to come out there. Okay, so this might seem a little bit complex. You've never, um, you might not have seen the col object before. You might not have seen the root object before. Um, however, it's really, really useful to know that if we're using different data types, um, we can actually filter them out into different streams. Now, chances are in your data set, um, you might have, as I mentioned to the other group, you might have births, deaths, and marriages in North and South Nigeria as a um, data set. I'm not sure why you would choose that, but that's a data set. Um, you would probably have dates, you might have ages, these kinds of things, and a column is always going to be the same kind of data. So it might be an integer or it might be a float. So you might not need to worry about this route through here, but that's just if you've got different types of data that could be useful. Okay, great. So we know how to get data in to the col. We can write it in the, in the text box, and we know how to get data out by calling its integer um, index, which is very useful. So what I'm going to do now is find a way of populating this window um, with data without having to write in it. So let's try that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to automatically populate this in a really fast way using an object that I love called Uzi, like the gun, Uzi. I'm going to have 10 data points. So I'm going to go Uzi 10. So what an Uzi does, I'm going to use the print command so that we can view this in the max window, is when I bang the left inlet of an Uzi, it outputs the number of bangs that I've specified in its argument. So have a look at the max window when I press this. Bang, 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 bang. 10 bangs. Okay. What's really great about this, however, is that we can also use the indexes. So we can bang very quickly the indexes to the print window. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, and they come out one after the other. So this, as you can see, is really useful if we want to be able to populate indexed data into a col. So I'm just going to create some random data. I'm going to create a random object. So that's giving me a random number between 0 and 999 when I bang it. And this is where things get a little bit tricky because I need to format my numbers so that they can go into the col. So just bear with me. So I want the Uzi to bang the random, but I also want to combine the number that comes out of this here, the random number, with the index that comes here. So there's a great object that you may have used before called pack. Pack allows us to pack two or three or any number of um, uh, data points, whether it be an integer or a float or a symbol, into the same message, into a list. Okay, so the thing to remember out about pack though is the order of operations. So in the right hand um, inlet, if we put a number in the right hand inlet, it will sit there and just wait until it receives a number in here. Now the Uzi object actually outputs its index before its bang, and that's not really useful for us. Because as we know, in the col, we want the index number first before the data. So let's connect them up anyway. We have the data going left and the index to the right. We know the index will come in first and just chill in this area. And then the data will stay in this area. And then we can just simply reverse that list using a command which is called ZL rev, and that will just flip around these two numbers. Let's prove that. Let's have a look. I'm going to use my print command one more time. Get this out of the way so we can have a look. 
Get rid of this. We'll have a look at what comes out. Okay, so we see we've got numbers between 0 and 999, and then our indexes. If I connect the pack to the ZL rev and to the print, we should have properly indexed data. And hey presto. So that's all ready. I'm going to get rid of my print and I'll prove that I can populate the coal. And there it is. Some random data. Very, very useful for testing. So you might have a data set that you've gotten from the ABS. You might have a data set that you've gotten from elsewhere. But here, this is just allowing us to simply test with some random data. So I'm going to finish this video now, and I'm going to continue on showing us how we can get data out of the coal and use it in some kind of a, um, a smooth um, uh, interpolated way, or taking streamed smooth data and actually sampling it to use um, in a finite, discrete way.